Welcome to the one within all to another episode of Innerverse. I'm your host, Chance, and very excited about getting into another health oriented episode today with our guest, Tim James. He's got a company called Chemical Free Body. And man, when it comes to the pharmacia sorcery that we're encountering in the world at this particular time, probably at the highest level of toxicity and uh, propaganda and all these different aspects that influence health on the mind, body, spirit level, we've really got to take it into our own hands to teach our self wellness and realize that our health is our wealth. And when we're following our creative and spiritual paths, which ought to be one and the same, we inevitably encounter the pressing need to purify our body temple in order to enhance our flow state and fix up the energetic leakages that cause us to spill our light and lose our sight of the highest potentials we can express in the present moment. That's why I'm super excited about our guest today because he's got a personal story of overcoming many difficult health challenges that led him to be inspired to bring his knowledge and ability to heal, to teach others exactly how they can do the same thing. And he provides some extremely high quality supplements at his website. So I'm excited to get into it. Let's do this thing with the health hero here to help us follow our highest excitement. Thanks for being here, Tim James. Can you start out with the introduction? to what you do and let people know where your website is and all the stuff that you're up to. Absolutely. Thanks Chance for having me on. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to chat with the, everybody else, the listeners out there. And my goal always is that um, to give you guys like at least one thing that you can go home and take action on and actually get first person results. That's the key because, you know, we can hear a lot of stuff and it's, it's good theory, but until we actually do something with it and take action, it's just, that's all it really is. It's theory. So um, I am just kind of a, you know, I grew up on Eastern Oregon on a farm, kind of a redneck background, hunting and fishing and um, not really had any spiritual practice at that time, except for I spent a lot of time in nature, which I believe is a spiritual practice. So maybe I was cutting myself short. I'm now I'm more thinking about it. Um, but, um, you know, I had a lot of health issues and um, I was able to turn all that stuff around um, naturally. And uh, it's become a passion project for me. I, I got out of the financial services industry and, and now that's what I do. Our, our company is called chemicalfreebody.com and we ship detox and nutrition supplements all over the world, like clinics in a box. And um, we do coaching and group coaching and we just try to help use, you know, common sense and, and give people basic fundamentals so they can turn their health around like I did. I love it, man. And before we get into the, you know, the main questions about health and detox, definitely want to talk about detox a lot because I've had plenty of personal experiences that are mind blowing with what can open up if you clean your filters. But first, I wanted to pose a question to you. What part of your life do you most consider to be your art? Like what craft are you most passionate about creating? And you can have more than one answer about that. Awesome. Well, uh, for me, uh, I want to continue to raise my consciousness. That's very important for me. I'm being, being very open and realizing that I'm more than just this physical um, vehicle that I've been given. Um, I'm really into frequency. That's why, I mean, I really appreciate you got your name there with a little lightning bolt next to it in the StreamYard chat. <laughs> That's really cool because we are all just frequency. Our cells are frequency. Uh, and I think that's why uh, I like music. So, you know, growing up as a kid uh, in Eastern Oregon, there wasn't a whole lot of radio stations except for 104.7 KCMB, the country channel. So I grew up listening to people like George Strait and um, Garth Brooks and Alan Jackson and that kind of stuff. And, you know, when you grow up, it's just like it's ingrained in you, you know, because you heard those songs so much and I really enjoy them. But I enjoy all kinds of music. I really enjoy classical music, any music, actually. I don't care if jazz, whatever, as long as it sounds good, I've liked it. And I had like a, this dream or something. It was like a wish. Oh, wow. I think it'd be really fun to be like a country singer and play guitar and be up on a stage or something. But it never got any, there was never any oomph behind it. It was like, I couldn't do that. Well, I'm, who am I? Like, pff, I can't play guitar. I can't sing. Like, you know, I can't, I couldn't. I, I, in my mind, I didn't think I could do it. Well, my son, now fast forward, I'm, you know, I'm 40, almost, I'll be 49 here in a couple months. And uh, my youngest son, he decided to start playing guitar and to connect with him more. I went and I just bought a little guitar. Well, he gave me a little guitar, a little cheap hundred dollar one. And I started plinking around on it. It was hard. It wasn't easy. 
And, um, and then for father's day, after about a year, him and my oldest son bought me a guitar for father's day. So that was really cool. And I finally got an instructor and then I've actually played in about seven gigs now, you know, with, with a band, I've done a few, I come up and do three, four five songs with them. And I, I like, I have guitar lessons tonight at seven 30. And I try to live in the present, but I'm really excited about it. Like, I can't wait until I get to do that guitar because for me, it's just like, it's just like taking something that I didn't think, I mean, I really enjoy making the music and stuff, but it's, it's mind blowing to me how I was such a master of limitation. Like I can't be, like, I, I, it's like, I, it's surreal. Like I'm literally creating what I've always wanted. It's literally happening right now. It's unfolding. And actually, I actually wrote a song and we've put it all down and we're going to start recording an album and I still can't sing very well, but I don't care. I'll, I'll get singing lessons later and figure it out. So those are some of the things that I'm really passionate about, about raising consciousness, helping other people raise consciousness. I'm building into music. I'm really into defending public health. That's very important to me um, because I know that we are all connected, every single one of us in every country. And I know the good, hard working middle class, not just middle class, but the working class people that actually create value. We've kind of been trampled on by, you know, a lot of people in power that, you know, it's just power, profits, and control. And we're really about truth, freedom, and health, self-empowerment, you becoming your own doctor, you learning how to self-heal, um, awareness of the toxins, get that crap out of your body, flood the body with nutrition. Uh, we teach a lot of detoxing and kind of stuff like that. And then to reduce stress. So if people can reduce their stress, clean up the body on a cellular level and flood the body with nutrition, people come back uh, real quick, real quick when they do those three things. I couldn't agree more. I feel like that's the keys to health. <laughs> My friend Clive DeCarl, I always like to quote him when he says, your body is not low on pharmaceutical chemicals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't have a big pharma deficiency. No. Right? You think about it, where in nature does any animal, does any animal take a synthetic acid based drug for their problems? They don't, they don't in nature, animals self heal. They take care of themselves. If a horse gets sick, it, it goes out and it starts eating different herbs that it wasn't eating before. Native Americans used to follow these horses around and watch with a sick horse and it would heal itself. And they were like, how did it do it? Well, it ate this, that, this, that. And then they played around with it. And over thousands of years, they developed their own pharmacology, basically their own, they, they became their own doctors. They learned how to use nature and because pharmaceutical companies, all they really do is they go into nature and they find a, an active compound that works. And then they take and synthesize it. And they take one isolated nutrient out of it. that gives you some type of an effect but it's, it's like the shadow of what it could be, right? It's like you have a symphony orchestra at your beck and call, your command, and yet you just call on one oboe. That would be the synthetic version, right? Or it'd be worse than that. It'd be probably like a young kid with a rock guitar that's never played music before, and he's just making a bunch of noise. And it comes into the body, and the body doesn't really know how to process it. That's why there's all these side effects. Well, you can take this, and it'll help you with your restless leg syndrome, but you could get increased gambling, heart murmurs, lymphoma, cancer, you know, consult your doctor if you're on this drug or that drug, because this could cause it, you know, it's like 37, it's like a minute long of side effects. Like why would anybody take that? We are distracted and we are disconnected from ourselves and from nature. And we have to realize that we are this, we are the answer. We are the solution and we can self heal. Exactly, man. Nature is what heals and we're actually nature. <laughs> that is what we are. Love it. We need those, all those cofactors of the symphony as you described it. And man, dude, there, it's just crazy that they have all these side effects that people will accept because they've taken authority for truth instead of truth for authority. And they think just like the idea, I couldn't play guitar. Well, I couldn't figure out how to deal with my own health issues and couldn't be farther from the truth. I mean, with 3000 possible side effects, Hey, take this antidepressant drug. It'll help you with your depression, but also might cause suicidal tendencies. <laughs> what? But that, that idea of uh, getting to the place where you realize that detoxing and nutrition are the keys to letting your body heal itself because nature heals and we are nature. That's what our bodies are. I'd love to hear some of your, 
you know, personal stories about what led you to the realizations that these components of nutrition and detox were the biggest part of the health journey and probably mindset too. Yeah. Well, I'll just, let's go back. I mean, I literally, like I said, I grew up on a cattle and hay farm. We had Hereford cattle, grass hay, alfalfa hay. I was living on the standard American diet, but I was really plugged into nature because we had a huge garden. Um, so I learned all about that, um, you know, planting crops, helping neighbors, doing certain things, uh, being around all the animals, chickens, ducks, geese, uh, cows, horses, pigs, goats, um, dogs, cats. I mean, we had between the two farms, me and my buddy, Mike, uh, I mean, we pretty much had freaking every animal there was. I even had rabbits. I mean, it was crazy. So I was really plugged into nature and woods a lot, but, and I actually was an athlete. So I played baseball at a high level for 30 years. And everything was working fine until, you know, let's fast forward. I'm 37 years old. Standard American diet wasn't working out so well. I'd gained 42 pounds. My energy was gone. My mental clarity was terrible. Um, I developed eczema on my knee, which was cracking and bleeding. It would stick to my pants. And then eventually I got eczema on both of my elbows, more cracking and bleeding. Another skin issue on my shoulder. I finally developed acid reflux so bad I was eating Tums and Rolaids 24-7. Uh, doctor wanted me to go on Prilosec and take medications. Um, I never did because I thought uh, just the word Prilosec, it sounded to me like an alien. It just sounded weird. And then um, I, I never, always think that the pharmaceutical drugs sound literally like the names of demons from some Necronomicon. <laughs> yeah, it's just. It's it's all. Just, yeah, it's just weird, right? So, I mean, a couple times I actually I get the prescription. I hardly ever would go fulfill it. But sometimes I did because I was in so much. I was just like, God, so desperate. And then I would look at and read and like all the side effects, like I was talking about earlier, like increased gambling and all this stuff and just weird. I'm like, you know what? Like hearing loss and I'm I'm not, I'm not doing that. It's like, I, even if it fixes this problem, I could have all this other stuff. At least I know what I'm dealing with. So I I stayed away from that stuff, but I just didn't know what to do. I tried high carb, low carb, high fat, low fat, high protein, low. I was trying all this stuff. I actually tried juicing for a month or so, but I was juicing carrots and beets and, Apples was all sugar with a little bit of greens in there and I didn't lose any weight. So the juicer went under the cupboard. Um, I tried a lot of stuff, man, five meals a day, you know, all these little things, but I just, you know, I had a little results here and there, but I couldn't really put my, couldn't make it work. It was just, wasn't working for me. So um, then I started bleeding rectally when I pooped. So that went on for two and a half years. So it was a very painful process on a scale of one to 10 going. Number two was like a six or a seven followed by blood. So here I am, my knees bleeding, my elbows are bleeding. I'm bleeding when I poop. That's why those of you that can't see me, my shirt says love when you poop because I used to not love it at all. And now I do. And what I found out, I've told this story quite a few times. And guess what? There's a lot of other people that have rectal bleeding when they poop. It's not an isolated incident. It's because the we're rotting from the inside out and stick around. We'll give you the solution or at least what I did and what's worked for myself and a lot of other folks. But you know, so that went on and then I was on a vacation to Peru and I was doubled over in pain on a boat. Um, we were in Northern Peru in a place called Tumbes on a fishing trip out in the ocean. And they're like, Oh, you're motion sickness. I'm like, no, I fish and hunt all the time. I've been out in the boats. I never get motion sickness. This is something else. Luckily for us, her dad was a medical doctor that ran a big clinic in Lima, Peru. And he diagnosed me. He's like, Oh, we have to get you to the hospital. You're going to have to have surgery. I was like, what? So we took the zip down to the airport and we missed the one plane flight out of this little town uh, that day. And he's like, we can't wait till tomorrow. He's like, we have to get you to hospital now or you could die. So I'm freaked out. But at the same time, I'm in so much pain. I can't literally even worry. I'm like, I am literally, my consciousness is in the present moment. I'm in pain. I'm bent over at a 90 degree angle. I can't even stand up erect. And they rented a van and then I, we drove down this bumpy road uh, down the coastline to a town called Peora. It was the next biggest city that had a hospital. And that, that ride was the most miserable experience of my life. Um, it was so bumpy. It was like bump, 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 bump. Just a potholy road for six hours. My wife's holding me and just like every bump was like somebody stabbing me with a knife and punching me in the gut. Stab, punch, punch, stab six hours. We got there. I'm completely soaked. I was so wet as from sweating that the paper money in my wallet was wet. I was exhausted. I had nothing left. They put me on an examination table in this third world country. Bugs are flying around me. 
and they're talking Spanish 100 miles an hour. And they he had them dope me up, put me on a commercial plane flight, and then I flew into Lima. You're not supposed to do that. I should have went into surgery, but it was like, it was like a like a third world country, man. It was like the hospital wasn't that great. I mean, there's bugs flying around in the examination room. Give you an idea, okay? So I'm freaked out. I go into Lima, take a taxi, and they pick me up, throw me on the gurney, and I go into surgery. And I spent the rest of my vacation recovering, and then my wife wheelchaired me back into the States. So I learned a couple things. Number one, I don't ever want to get surgery again. And I do thank those surgeons. Uh, they did save my life. Um, that's where Western medicine shines and crisis care. And that's what it was born out of. Western medicine, emergency rooms were born out of wartime. They do a darn good job of patching people up from gunshot wounds and stuff like that. And, you know, and people need surgeries like I do. Um, so thank you for that. Um, moving and then but the second thing i learned was that my poor health doesn't affect just me it affects everyone around me especially the ones that i love and care for the most so i ruined the trip for my wife her dad who had literally never had a vacation in 30 years at the hospital he was workaholic that was his first vacation where does he end up friggin back in the hospital taking care of me so i still didn't know what to do though man i came home I'm recovering from this surgery and I'm still don't know what to do. Then my friend Charles gets diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is supposedly this incurable blood cancer. He finds the Hippocrates Health Institute in West Palm Beach, Florida. This is a natural detox and nutrition clinic. And in an attempt to save his butt, he wanted asked me, hey, will you go there with me to support me? I got to go try to detox and try to save my life because they don't have nothing for me here at Western Medicine. So I was like, yeah, dude, whatever you need. So for me, I thought I was going to lose another friend. My grandma died of brain cancer. My aunt had died of uh, melanoma and lung cancer. Horrible, horrible what they went through. Um, a good buddy, I'm on my baseball team, Clay Mahoy, at age 40, died of stomach cancer when he left three little boys behind from ages 6 to 17. So my experience was you get cancer and you're toast. You don't make it. So here I think I'm going to lose another friend. I just wanted to spend as much time with him as I could before he was gone. And we go there, and that's where my whole everything changed for me, man. I, I learned about detoxing and nutrition and cleaning up the body. The first class was three and a half hours. It was called internal awareness. Um, and they explained from the time you eat food, what happens and how it exits the body. And then Dr. Uh, Scott um, Josephson that led the class, he said that the average person has about six to 12 pounds of impacted fecal material in the colon. And that is, is setting up in a terrain or environment to house viruses and bacteria and mold and yeast and fungus and parasites and mutagens, cancers. They love it because it's low oxygen, high acid. And he said, we got to clean that stuff out. And he actually pointed at me and he said, Tim, you have 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. And if you ever want to be healthy, truly healthy, you have to clean it out. Well, it all made sense, but his solution was a, col a colonic or colon hydrotherapy session. Are you familiar with those? I mean, just the word seems to imply that you're going in the outdoor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, um, that's basically what it is. You basically, I didn't know what it was. So I'll explain it for the listeners. You, if, if you don't know, it's you sit on a tube rectally and water gently goes in and out of your colon for about an hour and it cleans your colon. Gets rid of all that waste matter. Well, if you go on Google and you search it or whatever, you're going to be scared to death. They're going to, Western medicine will try to scare you because like it doesn't work. But, you know, uh, I have a podcast called The Health Hero Show, episode 38. Listen to that one. I interviewed Rebecca Harder. She is AKA Gaster Girl. Um, act one certified instructor level for colon hydrotherapy. And she's done over 20,000 colonics or colon hydrotherapy sessions. She has two clinics, one in Taos, New Mexico, and one in Portland, Oregon. And that's where I met her. So anyway, she debunks all that stuff. So if you want to get the, the, you know, the nitty gritty on that, cause we want to bring truth to you. So anyway, um, I elbow Charles cause I'm like, dude, I came here to help you and your cancer and everything, but I ain't doing that colon hydrotherapy deal. That ain't happening. But that guy was smart and he showed virtual colonoscopies of three unhealthy people's colon and one that was been on that Hippocrates protocol for a couple of years. The first woman was a 24 year old lady that had uh, Hashimoto's, like a thyroid issue. And she also had thrush, which is a yeast infection. Inside of her colon in that video was all yellow and white and weird and nasty. I was like, whoa, that's, that's gross. And then they went to a 65 year old male with colon cancer and parasites. And inside of his colon, was black and brown. Now you expect brown to be in the colon, right? It's a waste removal system, but it was tar black and he had white worms crawling around. And I'll never forget Dr. Josephson turns around and said, Hey, look, you guys think that this parasite deal is a third world affair. Far from it. Easily over 50% of you have parasites. And I'm not just talking about the hookworms and pinworms and tapeworms that you can see like this. 
and you'll see them too. Like in during heart surgeries, talk to a heart surgeon when they're doing heart surgeries. A lot of times they'll open up the heart and pockets of parasites just come flying out of the heart. I mean, it's, they, they get into us because our immune systems have dropped because we're de-evolving and through stress and a lack of nutrition and these chemical buildup, we're breaking down and they, these invaders come in. So anyway, he said that these microscopic parasites too, you can't see that they're in the blood and the tissues and inside of you. And he said, all of them are eating our food, drinking our drink, and they're urinating and defecating in us and causing more acid. And then they have like thousands of eggs. And now I'm like freaked out. I'm like, what? So then he went to the third person, which was a 45 year old female with breast cancer and like colitis or Crohn's, her gut was jacked up. And again, black, nasty, didn't look good. Then they showed the, the inside the colon of somebody had been on this lifestyle. Now the waste matter was there, the brown stuff, but inside the colon, you could tell it was like there was pink and clean and the blood vessels and the terrain was completely different. Okay. And for me, that's when the light bulb went off and I got it. It's an inside job. It's, it's an inside job. And it's like if the tractor on the farm or your car isn't running well, you don't just put in better fuel. You take it into the shop and you flush out the engine. You flush out the transmission fluid, new spark plugs, new fuel filter, new oil. You, you, you maintenance it. But we don't know how to maintenance our bodies because nobody gave us a freaking owner's manual. And we've, we've been disconnected from ourselves. And I mean that. I mean nature. You said it earlier. We are nature. We don't live in nature. We don't live with nature. We are an expression of nature. We are nature. Your body's mostly water. Where do you find water? In nature. You have bacteria in your gut called um, microbiome, gut microbiome. Many of the same gut microbiome are the same soil microbiome that are in the soil. Again, we are nature. And when you die, uh, uh, you know, and let's say you are cremated, what's left? Bunch of minerals. Where do you find minerals? In the soil, nature. There's no question. We are nature. We've been disconnected from nature. So this guy is showing us on the inside, all this stuff. And that's when I got it. And I was like, oh my God, I got to get that, that stuff cleaned up. I have to take my body, my car into the shop and I got to flush the engine. And to me, the driving engine of our life is the digestive tract where we're bringing nutrients and water and stuff into through the intestinal lining to get into the bloodstream, to get into our working cells, to rebuild ourselves for, and give us energy for our activities of daily living and our think. So I went in the next day, I got the colon hydrotherapy session. They weighed me, I did it. Hour later, they weighed me again. I dropped 10 pounds chance of impacted fecal material in one one hour session. And in 2011, when I did this for the first time, the record at that time, after 61 years of being in business, Hippocrates Health Institute had a lady had dropped 27 pounds of impacted fecal material in one one hour session. Now, to put that in context, uh, I, I always like to, you know, I thought, wow, that's as much as a medium sized dog literally falling out of your butt. Think about that. All that funk and gunk and junk that was housing and protecting and creating an environment or terrain for viruses, bacteria, mold, yeast, fungus, parasites, and these mutagens, cancers, they love it. That's why. When you go to a Hippocrates Health Institute, the first week ain't the funnest. You're going through the detox. And it's, you know, I came right off the standard American diet right on this thing. So I had night sweats. I was irritable. I had a metallic taste coming out of my tongue as heavy metals were leaving my body. But I didn't have it as bad as some people. Some people had rashes breaking out. People had parasites crawling out of their pores. One lady at lunch had a parasite crawling out of her eye. And I saw this stuff, first person experience. And why was this happening? because we were changing the internal terrain and we were making our bodies high oxygen and high alkaline. That is an inhospitable environment for these harmful organisms. So they packed their bags and they left. And that's it. That's where it all started. And after a few days at that place, man, after about a week, I woke up and I looked at Charles. I said, dude, do you feel as good as I do? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I have, my arms are tingling. My mental clarity is amazing. I'm like, I've already lost 11 pounds in the first week. We've discovered the fountain of youth. I mean, this, like, this is not woo. -woo. This is what everybody's looking for, like literally. And all it was, was getting our attitude right and changing the inputs. We got clean air, clean water, clean food. We learned how to detox and flood the body with nature, which is what we are. And him and I started coming back to life. And I said, dude, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to go home. I'm going to give up all meat except for bacon. I'm going to do this whole plant-based thing with you. We're going to juice every day. We're going to detox and you're going to, you're going to heal of cancer. And that's exactly what we did. We came back home. We got to work. We block and tackle, block and tackle every day. Did our juices twice a day. And in two and a half years, Charles healed himself of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, no radiation, no, no chemo, no surgery, none of that stuff. 
And um, he was able to see his son graduate high school, see us go to father son weekend at Oregon state university. And his son just sold him a house. His son's a real estate agent now. So, and I play guitar with Charles now and he's transformed his health and he went from bankruptcy and cancer to a successful business. And uh, he's pretty happy now, really happy. And I still have my friend and um, I just tell everybody about this stuff, man. So as a financial advisor, I started teaching classes at my home. We taught over 5,500 people, these raw food juicing detox classes. And, and now that's transitioned into chemical free body. And now we just do it over the airwaves and, and, um, and we supply people with products and kits at home where they can, you know, do it themselves. Brother, that's a big story. There's so much in there. Like <laughs> I found enough questions to probably carry us through the rest of the hour and a half just from listening to that. And I have some experience with a few of the things you're talking about. The real question I'm asking myself is where to start. Uh, colon cleansing, I think is a good foundational thing. Maybe you have thoughts on like, as far as doing cleansing protocols, the order you might want to address the organs in perhaps because when one thing is cleaned up, it sends its toxins down the line and you want to maybe hit that assembly yeah. line in a good, a good yeah, uh, that's, sequence. That's a really, uh, really good observation you just made right there. Cause a lot of people, they hear about, Oh, I want to do a liver gallbladder flush cause it worked for their friend or whatever. I'm like, no, they're like, I want to do a kidney cleanse. I'm like, no, we have got to get the pathway of elimination cleaned out first because that's where a lot, I mean, when you start cleansing the gallbladder or the liver or the kidneys, a lot of this stuff is going to go out through the pathways of elimination, urination, defecation, perspiration, respiration. And for women, you have a fifth pathway, menstruation. So guys, we don't have that. And I think maybe that's why women live a little bit longer. They have a fifth pathway of elimination. Who knows? But that would be a guess on my part. So a lot of this stuff is going to go out through the bowels. So if your bowels are already kind of plugged up, wouldn't it make sense to clean the pathway of elimination first so that any stuff comes out? Like if you do a liver gallbladder flush, which we do teach that, that's part of our protocols. And pretty much every single person that's done that, that we've led has had not one or two, but hundreds of gallstones and kidney stones come out of them. Hundreds, hundreds. Like the first time I did it, it was like, oh, I'm pretty healthy. Nothing really came out. I saw a couple little stones. And then about an hour later, whoosh. And I had like 300 stones fall out of me. And I was like, holy crap. So I, I, I fished them out, the bigger ones. And I took photos of it on paper. I remember I did a podcast, one of the first podcasts I did, I was on the conspiracy farm and I showed Pat and Jeffrey, the host, and they were like, oh my God, They're like, put it away. I can't, believe, no way that came out of you. Oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, it's crazy. And, um, you know, just showing people like what, what's going on is, but you can't see it, right? Cause it's inside of you. But if those bile ducts are plugged up with, um, stones, you're not going to have good bile flow like you. So that's going to affect digestion and absorption of nutrients. So we want to just teach people how to become their own mechanics basically and clean up the body and do it smart. But the pathway of elimination is number one. And then we usually get them into kidney cleansing. Then we go into liver gallbladder flush and just kind of on down the line. But that's, that's kind of the pathway that we take people when we're doing that. So a lot of people though, I get it are listening. They're like, I ain't doing that colon hydrotherapy thing, the colonic. I get it. Like I've, I didn't want to do it. I was in a place where I saw all this stuff and it was like convincing. And I just, I just like, I did it. And it was like the best thing ever, but I've been coaching lots of people and I'm very convincing. I think it makes a lot of sense, but there's still people like I had this one gal, she was a personal trainer. She had like a uh, colitis or Crohn's gut issue. Here she was trying to be the model of fitness, right? She's doing those competitions where she's a figure where they flex and they do the thing. And she's like, and a personal trainer. She's like, Tim, I've been in the hospital three times. I'm in my mid thirties. I have three small children. I'm trying to do these fitness competitions. She goes, when I'm on stage, I'm about to pass out. She goes, I'm not healthy. I feel like a fraud and I'm in the hospital in pain. My stomach's jacked up. And, uh, and I said, well, you can just do what I did and try it out. This is like right in the beginning. I said, I went plant-based and She's like, oh, I couldn't do that. And I'm like, well, you're the one in pain, man. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. We were friends from a previous, she was a real estate agent and I was a mortgage broker back in the day. And so she did it. She finally did it and she healed herself, but she didn't, she wouldn't do the colon hydrotherapy. She just wouldn't do it. And it was like, but and I, she had all these detox symptoms. She had a rash breaking out on her neck and her chest. And she's like, what about this rash? I said, you're detoxing. 
It took three weeks to get rid of that rash. Her body had to push that stuff out. Now, if she would have went in and got the colon hydrotherapy, probably in a week, week and a half, that would have been gone. But when that stuff is coming out, it goes into the colon and then it goes back up the hepatic vein into the liver and it recirculates and recirculates as it's leaving and leaving. So that's why colon hydrotherapy is so important because it can sweep stuff out very quickly, cut back the detox symptoms. So we recognize this, that cleaning the pathway of elimination is the most important thing. Step one, besides, you know, wanting to change and having an attitude for that. Um, So I started putting people on a, a magnesium type supplement. And it would turn into liquid oxygen, basically, and clean everything out, good and bad, bacteria and all. So when I started sharing this with my formula, he's like, eh, that's a little rough, Tim. Uh, And I said, well, do you have a better solution? He did. We call it gut detox. It's an ancient Ayurvedic formula that people can take. In over 15 days, you can get rid of that 6 to 12 pounds of impacted fecal material with no diarrhea, none, which is nice. It's a very gentle approach to go in and microscopically clean those villi, those hair-like structures and clean it up, not just the large intestine, but the small intestine too, because that thing can also get lined with like this black, brown, viscous, uh, mucoid plaque or toxins. And sometimes when people are doing colon hydrotherapy sessions, all of a sudden they'll see these long strands of like, it looks like phone cord, like a black phone cord. Remember the old phone cords? Um, and people are like, what's that? Well, that's, that's that mucoid plaque releasing from the small intestines, right? So it's that stuff was housing and protecting. I've seen it, <laughs> I've seen it myself. Yeah. I uh, I've never tried the hydrotherapy or whatever, but I have done like I think it was 2017. I did a full fledged colon cleanse protocol where it used like benzonite clay. Uh, so basically, I was on a restricted diet of just like juice and certain juices and like vegetable broth for a certain number of days, and I was taking this these tablets that when they hit the moisture in your body, that they, they would expand and they had this like scrubbing action mm-hmm. and scrubbed out all that plaque, mucoid plaque, which yep. if you look it up, it's like considered by the Wikipedia gatekeepers to be not even a thing. <laughs> it's not even real, but it's super real. I saw old pills come out stuff yeah. that was lodged into the lining. So my question with that, I mean, I'm a rock climber. So if I could just weigh 10 pounds less, all of a sudden that would be, extremely helpful but oh yeah how often do you think that this type of because i had a really successful cleanse i have more things to say about it after we get a little further down the line but how often do you think somebody needs to be paying attention to cleaning out the colon for example yeah obviously that's the foundational thing i'm it's been about five years for me well and i eat clean since then so that helps but not always perfect well everybody's different everybody's body's unique so it depends on that's where if you get a really good colon hydrotherapist, they'll be able to guide you. I believe that up front, you need to do two sessions minimum back to back. So you do one on day one, clean it out. And like you said, then the rest of the organs are going to recognize, wow, he or she cleaned up the colon, right? Now let's release some other stuff. So maybe the small intestine will start releasing mucoid plaque, the gallbladder or the liver will start releasing bile with toxins in it. And that stuff will go down into the colon and then that's why it's really important to come in the second day and sweep it out again, because otherwise, again, it goes back up the hepatic vein and the liver and recycles. So it's just delay. It's just, it lengthens the detox symptoms, like, you know, being fatigued, night sweats, irritable rashes, that kind of stuff. Right. Cause we're, we're really polluted. People don't realize like in the blood serum, it's bad. Like you can, if you type these three words in like umbilical cord chemical, umbilical cord chemical when you're done listening to this you'll see all the studies that i saw go back to 2005 that show that every single child being born today has um they look for 400 toxic chemicals they find 71 percent of what they're looking for 250 and 180 cause cancer in humans 212 cause developmental and brain disorders these are our youngest our babies and our young moms supposedly the healthiest of all of us they are freaking born polluted in the blood serum now what's scarier than that that's bad enough, right? You, would you like your child to be born with um, 180 cancer-causing chemicals? Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that, but that's the reality. We're de-evolving as species. We're so polluted today. But the reality is, is that the, the fat tissue, the muscle tissue, adipose tissue, is 500 to 1,000 times more concentrated in chemicals than what they're, they're testing in the blood serum. We are so polluted today. 
this is why I tell people like it's an inside job. It's not just about cleaning up the gut. But we have to think about on a cellular level in the blood and our fat and our muscle tissue. We have got to get rid of heavy metals, radiation and pollution, these toxins, these chemicals, these pesticides and fungicides and herbicides and larvicides and uh, formaldehyde that comes from if you have carpet. If it is synthetic carpet. Guess what? You're you're breathing in formaldehyde. You're breathing it in. If you just painted your house, that house is going to off gas the paint for four and a half years until it cures. Four and a half years, you're breathing in 20,000 breaths a day. You're breathing in toxins. They attach the mucous membrane in the back of your throat. And they go down and they go right into your digestive tract, right? And then into the bloodstream. So we're, we just can't see it. And that's the problem is because it's you, out of sight, out of mind. You don't think it's a problem. And it's kind of a slow kill. Right. Every day, the breaths, the water, the shampoos with sodium lauryl sulfate in it, which is a known carcinogen. It's a, a foaming agent. So check your shampoo. Or how about your toothpaste? The toothpaste says, harmful if swallowed, please contact the poison control center. You might want to rethink putting that crap in your mouth anymore because it is swallowing a little bit and it is going through the mucous membrane and directly into the bloodstream and there's no liver to filter it. So if you're going to put something in your mouth that says harmful if swallowed, please contact the poison control center. Think about that. Really just pause for a moment and think about how back ass words our society is that they could put a statement like on a product that you're going to put in your freaking mouth and you're going to do it every day, once, twice, three times a day. It, it's like, but I never Tim, the FDA is protecting us. These are safe and effective products. Food and Drug Administration. So how healthy are we? Let's just look at the results. 80% of us are overweight, obese, and morbidly obese. 38% of our children are obese, overweight. When I was a kid growing up in the 70s and 80s, there was like one or two overweight kids in our class. Everybody else was pretty skinny, right? Now, almost half of the children are overweight. It's disgusting what we're doing to our children as adults. Our kids are praying that we're going to wake up and start taking responsibility for our health so we can lead by example and stop putting up with this. The food, obviously, if the Food and Drug Administration was successful, wouldn't we all be healthy? How come we're getting unhealthier? Because the system- If I was a superhero, I would just go around, instead of looking for criminals, I mean, this is criminal, I'd just slap the, the Coke out of baby's hands when people at the McDonald's are giving them a sippy cup with the poison fizzy water. Yeah. Yeah. It's cause, Oh man, it's just, there's, it goes so deep cause there's so much emotional stuff going on. You know, my coaching program, I thought, Oh, I'll just tell people how to eat and do this and they'll be healthy. When I found out it's like, Whoa, one of the reasons they're eating the way they're eating is because of the emotional baggage. 60% of the people listen to this 60% of the people that I've coached, I would dig deep and I'd find out, I'd ask them about their mom and their dad and their brothers and sisters growing up. What was going on? What was the relationship like? A lot of times there was like, crazy stuff like dad threw me off a roof dad threw me over a fence dad threw me through a window mom like um her boyfriends molested me mom was a drug addict you know just like like 60 percent of people had some severe trauma and a lot of it was molestation by family members and i'm just like what and this just kept showing up over and over and over and you know when you coach 600 people you patterns start emerging and i realized that we're using food as a dope and we have all these emotions that are trying to come up and heal. And cause that's where the real healing begins. But then we use the food as a dope to push them back down. Cause we don't want to deal with it. It's too painful, too hurtful. And nobody was giving a toolkit to learn how to deal with those painful emotions. We have to detox them just like getting chemicals out of the body and toxins and heavy metals and radiation. You have to get these emotions out. You need to cry and do an emotional detox. And just I've like the way the body is going to express the toxins through your skin as a rash or something, you got to feel the feelings that are deep down. That's why the other side of this coin, besides the nutrition and the detoxing physically, is stuff like frequency based healing modalities, like the tuning fork stuff I do. I mean, I run into the same stuff as you do. It blows people's mind that I'll finish up the session and we haven't spoken. I'm just playing forks for an hour. And afterwards I'm like, okay, so uh, your dad cheated on your mom when you were about 14 and she's resented him the whole life. And you've absorbed a lot of negative energy from her being a resentful, spiteful person, things like that. And you can just find it in the field. It's very similar, but they need to be shown that that's in there so that they can feel it and process it and no longer have this ignoring of it. And also hopefully, helpfully have their energy centers balanced so that 
when they do have awareness of it, they're, they're looking at it from a centered place and not going to then spiral out from reliving the trauma, but actually process it and, and move through it. Mm-hmm. And it turns it into an empowering thing. You know, I had, um, I went and got some tuning forks done one time. And the first time that lady struck that tuning fork, I felt like some electric stuff go from the top of my head all the way down my spine and radiated all of, I was like, whoa. I was freaked out. And I, you know, cause growing up, I always thought all this stuff was woo woo. In fact, vegetarians, I thought they were crazy. These people have lost their brains. Right. I didn't even know what the word vegan existed, you know? So anyway, um, this is a very, uh, at Hippocrates health Institute. They're very aware of all this stuff. In fact, our Dr. Clement, he said, we look at you all as like little fragile eggs when you get here. And what we do is we take you and we throw you up in the air as high as we can. And we let you come down on the concrete and crack. And that's where the healing begins. And he said, we'll have people from that have like cancer, like from Calgary, Canada, like cowboys that literally grew up and lived out on the range are eating b- chunk of meat and a b- baked potato next to a barbed wire fence and drinking black coffee out of a tin can, like literally, right? Rough, tough cowboys, but they get cancer too. And when Western medicine fails them and there's nothing left, a lot of them is a last ditch effort. They'll end up at a, like a Hippocrates health Institute and a chance to an effort to save their butt. And what will happen is somewhere along day two, three, four, um, as we've taken the dope away, the food, the baked potatoes and all the stuff, and they're on these living foods, these high vibe foods, sprouted nuts, sprouted grains, sprouted beans, sprouted nuts, all these stuff, juices, wheatgrass, and all these things. Now the dope is gone and the emotions start coming up. And these cowboys um, will be on a massage table getting a massage. And all of a sudden they start crying uncontrollably for an hour to two hours. And they can't stop. And sometimes that, you know, they might only have an hour long session, but that they push everybody back when that kind of stuff happens, they allow them to just to be, and that uh, person, their massage therapist will just be there and supporting them and comforting them. And then they'll eventually be done. And then they're always apologizing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. They're very embarrassed, especially men. They're super embarrassed that they were just crying, especially in front of a woman, if it was the massage therapist. And, and then, and they're very like, no, this is exactly why you came here this now you have a chance to heal right because it could have been maybe his dad beat the crap out of him or whatever or treat him like call him a little fat tubby kid or something his whole life who knows what it was right but bottling up this stuff they were carrying around for 30 40 50 60 years and it comes out now i heard those stories i had an experience at that time and then i went back in 2013 to the institute to because i first time i went i was there to support charles but this time i wanted to go and focus on me and put myself first. And that's what I did. And I went there and I met some really cool friends. And this one girl that I met named Crystal, she was from, from Canada too, actually. And um, she was just, we were sitting by the pool, just chatting in the middle of the day. We had a break or something. And then she was telling me about her boyfriends and how just things weren't working. And she felt like, like they, she, she really wanted a connection with a man, not just sex, right? And then she just blurted out. She's like, I'm all fucked up. And then she just like, just started crying uncontrollably just. And I was like, you know, a human being, I felt bad. I'm like, I'll hug her. And then all of a sudden something happened inside of me and I started crying uncontrollably. And we're sitting there holding on to each other, just bawling and vibrating is crying for like 45 minutes to an hour. And then it stopped. Our shirts are soaked. We're sitting there crying. We're like, I'm like, what was that? And then she's like, what was that? I'm like, I don't know. And then I'm like, I, I think it was like, that was that emotional release Dr. Clem was talking about, like about the, the Cowboys, you know? All I can tell you was, dude, is that I walked away from that and I felt like there was this huge weight that I was carrying around that I didn't even know that I was carrying it around. I literally felt like I was floating around on a magic carpet. Like I'm frick, I'm floating across the ground now that I'm walking. It's like, whoa, it was the most trippy experience. I come back home. I'm still a financial advisor. And this is where uh, for the people listening, if you're new and you, you think some of this stuff is woo woo. Cause I did, you know, I had this massage therapist in the building when I was a financial advisor. And once a week I'd get a massage from her. She was also a Reiki master. And I thought she was crazy. I thought it was all woo woo stuff. Right. And this is how it would go every week. Hi, Tim. How are you? Come over and have a seat. You can change and get ready. I've got this essential oil going over here. We've got this music playing here. And she was just the nicest lady. I mean, she has some big old forums on her, man. She was tough, but she was super sweet and super nice to me. And that's how it went every single time I went into that room. Now I come back from Hippocrates. I open up the door. And the first thing she goes is she's like, 
she goes, what happened to you? Like freaking me out. Like she's never done this, dude. I've been going to her for over a year. She's like, what happened to you? And I'm like, uh, what are you talking about? She's like, something radically has changed in your life. I can totally, I, I feel it. She's like, I am very excited to work on you today. She goes, I never told you this, Tim, but she goes, did you know this, that I schedule you? You're my final client to work on every day when you, I'm like, no. She goes, the reason I put you last is because when I'm done working on you, I, I, I'm exhausted. I'm completely exhausted and I have to go home and recuperate. I couldn't work on anybody else after I've worked on you. Now I'm feeling bad and guilty. I'm like, I had no idea any of this stuff was going on. And she said, so I'm very excited to work on you today. Something major has shifted for you. I'm very excited. And she goes, I'll be right back. So I changed, get on. She massaged me. And then afterwards I'm like, are you okay? You know, it's like the, she's like, Oh, it was, I was so easy working on you today. I could work on you all day long. So tell me, honey, what happened? What happened? And I was just like, um, I don't even know what to talk. She said, well, what happened? What's going on? She, I, she goes, you were gone last week. Where'd you go? And I was like, oh yeah, well, I went to the Hippocrates Health Institute. She says, what happened there? She just kept questioning me. And finally, I, I was like, I, I got it. And I told her about the story. And she's like, ah, oh, very good. We found, and that, that's in the moment I figured out she helped me what, what I was releasing. I was going through a very nasty child custody battle at that point in time. And I'm a very competitive person and I didn't want to lose. But one time I, what happened was, is I'd be talking to my soon to be um, ex-partner and we'd be yelling at each other. And then I'd hear my ch children in the background. I'm like, are you in the car or something? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like the kids could hear me. And, and then I read this book in my, uh, uh, psychologist or was it therapist, not psychologist, but the therapist said I should get, it was called, um, uh, Oh, something about high con children caught, caught in the middle children of high conflict divorce. And so I bought that book and I read it and it talked about if you are fighting with your partner and you guys are splitting up and the kids hear any of it, you're destroying them, their, their emotional being for life. And I read that and that's when I had to walk away. I said, you can have, the, you can have full custody. And it was the hardest thing I had to do because I'm a competitive person, but I was in it for the long game and it worked out really good. I have a great relationship with my kids now. It was a tough deal. I don't want to get into all that. But what happened was, is I was able to release all that stuff. And then it happened one other time after my little brother died, I had another emotional release. So it happened twice in my life. I've experienced it. It's real right? The food, changing the food and the diet this is the easy stuff, but being able to tap in and tune into the emotional stuff that's holding us back and, and turning it into something to empower us rather than to drag us down. And some people don't even know they're it's there. Like you might not even know what's there because you've suppressed it so much. Dr. Clement himself said that he had a crazy friend that was getting a PhD every three years and something else. And he got a hypnotherapy. He's like, come on over. I'm going to hypnotize you. He's like, you can't hypnotize me. Boom, he was out like a light. And he started going back in time, 20s, 15. And when he hit like 16, Brian cried uncontrollably for an hour and a half. And he found out that that was when he took the tickets to like the baseball game for his dad and said, dad, we're going to the baseball game. And his dad just couldn't do it. He was busy. I can't go. He took that as that you're not a man. And he was carrying that around for his whole life. So he thanked his friend, thanked his friend, because he had no idea that, that he was dragging that stuff around. Right. So the emotional, it's an the emotional, it's an inside game for the gut, the cells and all that stuff, but it's also an inside game for the emotions. So much there, man. <laughs> really fantastic story though. You're absolutely right. We gotta, we gotta have these releases and that's one of the more the emotional side of the release is one of the more mysterious aspects of it because you can approach the physical side you can do things that you know are going to have a certain mechanistic result in terms of releasing toxins and getting stuff out. But getting to the point where you have that big cry, if that's the way that it needs to express, can be pretty tricky and require just persistence, patience. And the moment will come. And then when the moment comes, you almost have no choice but to go with it. It's happening. So, <laughs> you know, that's the key is the, just keep going and realize that uh, in this especially age of, you know, rampant demonic infestation, literally or metaphorically, as it may be, that the emotional detox is something that is a constant, I won't say struggle or battle, but a constant 
path that we got to keep ourselves on because you know there's always more layers to the onion i may have a client for example that does have a big crying release but then they come back two or three more times and there's still more things more levels deeper right and it also has to do with the fact that we are part of this larger life fractal and that in life force energy or in the etheric sense that is where we're one and infinite so we, the best thing that we can do to help heal the world is put ourselves first and put our own healing first. And that actually changes the entire way that we interface with the world and what the world ends up developing into. It's not something that you can quantify, but it's something you can experience and know for yourself. And we all have to take that opportunity. You know, if we want to see the world change, we got to do our own changing. So let's talk about, we got like 10 minutes in the first hour. Let's talk about chemical free body what you do for people maybe also give us some more info on your podcast some of your favorite episodes what people can expect to find there and you know round it out before we go into hour two with giving people all the details on how they can get more tim james because <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting over here like i forget a couple of minutes in this to- uh, talk that i'm the host i'm just like in the audience for a good real good podcast so i appreciate all the energy you're bringing to this and these insights are key. I got to give thanks to Matt Landman for putting us in touch. He always gives great recommendations for me. So uh, yeah, thanks, Matt. Absolutely. And yeah, let's get into CFB. Well, Chemical Free Body um, was after I, I, I looked up umbilical cord chemical and I realized that the young babies and mothers were polluted. I literally sat back in my chair and I was like, oh my God, I had a realization. We're all polluted. And the older we are, the more time we've had to bioaccumulate these toxins from the air we breathe, the water we drink, the foods we eat, personal care products, makeup, shampoos, soaps, sunscreens, all this stuff, air fresheners, they stick in the wall with chemicals. And then I started looking and it's like, dude, the chemicals are freaking everywhere. It's like in everywhere, everything. So I was like, if I can help bring awareness to this, I think that's what's going to help. give people uh they number one they have to have the awareness but then to give them the tools to get this stuff out and then to stop putting it in right awareness to stop putting it in and then and then buy different products you know vote with your dollars that's a very powerful way to change things the voting systems are kind of jacked right now but you can still vote with your dollars right so anyway um i started chemical free body and um it was originally a coaching company Um, so I started coaching people one-on-one. It was just me. And then, um, uh, I started uh, a supplement line, uh, with Dr. Scott Treadway because I I started reading labels on like food products and, and, and beverages. And I would go down rabbit holes and I'd, I'd look up every single ingredient and call companies and really dig into it and look up words that I couldn't pronounce. And then I'm like, Oh my God, like I did a whole expose on like pause Easter eggs one year. Like the, the red dyes, the blue dyes, the yellow dyes they're using for these Easter eggs are cancer causers. And those are bleeding into the eggs. Like it was like, what are we doing to our children? You know, like I said, this stuff is everywhere. So um, I, I, I was just trying to educate people. So I was doing a lot of classes out of the house. I was teaching these detox nutrition juicing classes twice a week. I taught over 5,500 people in the Portland, Vancouver area. Um, I was growing sprouts and then people would see my sprouts and I would tell them this is the world's finest medicine because it's, you know, it's very close to the sun and all this phytochemicals and hormones and oxygen and enzymes, all these things you get from living foods that you don't get from, you know, even fresh vegetables that are cut two weeks ago, you get in the store, um, or that especially that are cooked. And I had, so we ended up, my whole garage man got converted into basically a sprout garden. (laughs) So here I am getting up at three 30 in the morning, 4 a.m tending to these sprouts and labeling them and then dropping them off at clients houses. I was delivering wheatgrass and sprouts to 40 to 50 cancer patients a week. And that went on for five and a half years. I actually had to get some help to help me because I was running a financial practice full time too. So that went on for a long time, but then chemical free body uh, was born because I realized that I couldn't ship sprouts all over the world because they're perishable. So we tried to make, supplements that were as close to fresh as possible. And then when I found it in the supplement industry that 92% of the supplements in the market are pure synthetics, 85% of those are owned by pharmaceutical companies. 
And then of the 8% that are left that are food-based or herbal, um, they still have things in the other ingredients that are still ingredients, things like magnesium stearate that cancel out absorption, digestion, silicon dioxide, which is a level three toxin on the EPA's toxin list, yet it's in most supplements as a filler or flow agent, um, or dicalcium phosphate, just to name a few. Those are the top three. So we do a lot of supplement reviews for people. We, um, uh, we coach them. And then I develop these products that are like a detox nutrition in a box. So we have a product called gut detox that cleans out the digestive tract and the, uh, you know, to clean that pathway up, we have toxin detox that I'm very proud of. It was actually uh, formulated two formulas for the military to pull the depleted uranium out of them. We were able to combine it into one and that pulls out the heavy metals, the radiation and pollution. And a really good episode on that one is um, I had on a couple uh, episode 87, it was Dan and Ashley's journey healing their son's autism. Their son uh, got autism. You have to listen to it, but they said when they, when he took the toxin detox product to get the heavy metals out from the vaccinations, that's when the, uh, then their son unlocked and he actually started speaking again. And now they have their son back, but they were smart. They did their own homework. They got him off of gluten, got him off of dairy, got him a full spectrum CBD. Um, got him on probiotics and all of those things were actually part of our autism protocol. They, they found out on their own. And then he was just researching that there's like, Oh, there's heavy metals and mercury and at thimerosal and aluminum stuff in some of these jabs. And he thought, well, maybe that'll help my son. And then he looked at our toxin detox product and all the natural ingredients that were used to chelate those things out of the body were in that. So he just, so I was already taking it myself. I give it to my son, but that's a really good episode to listen to. Um, I really like that one because those people were brave enough to come on because we've helped a lot of people with that situation, but they were too scared to come on just to tell this truth about how their son or daughter got healed. Just weird um, how backwards everything is today. People are afraid to talk about truth, the things that work. Um, so anyway, uh, we've been shipping this stuff all over the world. Uh, we've got, uh, I have awesome products. We've got a green juice formula, probiotics, enzymes. Um, and, uh, we have a special machine that we bought recently in the last year or so that makes raw materials very small. So we have a whole new tincture line coming out of these hyper absorbable products because I know people are so compromised, the digestive tract, uh, inflammation on the cells, lack of hydration on the cells, lack of a good lipid membrane or fat membrane on cells. People are having a really tar hard time chance absorbing nutrients and getting them into the cell. Okay, you can get it in the bloodstream. That's one thing, but it's got to get into the cell. So this stuff bypasses that. We've, uh, it goes through the mucous membrane in the mouth and it goes directly into the bloodstream and right into the cell because it's so small. It goes right through the blood brain barrier. So our, we have a product called Turmeric 100. It was our first one we launched. This thing's literally like 185 times more anti-inflammatory than any other turmeric product. And you don't need black pepper because we're not going through the digestive tract. It's like literally in five minutes, it's in your bloodstream, in your whole body. And it's quite profound. Me, I was able to trail run twice a week instead of once a week because of my knee inflammation just because of that product. It's actually a go-to at a, a functional medicine clinic down in Texas for anti-inflammatory. So we have a whole new line of these hyper-absorbable tinctures coming out like our multi-shroom product and our V-Stack uh, product. So I'm a geek when it comes to this stuff. We have a master formula on staff and I believe in purity and potency. And that we should only put nature into our body, period. And so that's what we do. Um, those are those are some of the things that um, we do over here. So we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do. A, I lead a group coaching community weekly, and then we have our supplements. And I and we have a skin a skin cream healing thing coming out pretty soon too. So my goal is just to have a place like where chemical free bodies where you can come and get a chemical free life. Get your air clean, get your air right, get your water right, detox, saunas, uh, air purification, that kind of stuff, and have supplements and nutritional and food products where people can come that they can trust. Um, that's the goal. You're doing the Lord's work, my friend. Wow. I having just done a liver cleanse pretty recently that included turmeric and black pepper, would be really interested to try out that formulation of the turmeric that goes straight to the bloodstream, like you described. That's pretty amazing. It's, it's, we're getting, it's a funny thing. Cause we get, um, oh, I'd say probably once every other week. Now we get somebody in their seventies. It's usually the lady that calls 
And she said, this product is not working for my husband. So usually some old dude hears about us and he's like, my knees are killing me, right? Or he's got back pain. And a lot of people are taking turmeric for pain. And it does work for that. It's a major anti-inflammatory. I bought it to reduce cell or made it for myself for cellular inflammation. It was the last key for me to really, you know, step up my game on a cellular level for my health, but it also works for pain. So anyway, they'll order it for back pain or knee pain and they'll take it and they start getting diarrhea. Well, why is that? Because they've reduced the cellular inflammation so much, the cells are dumping toxins, right? So it's like, we need to get a refund. This thing's not working. It's giving my husband diarrhea. I'm like, well, does his knees feel better? Well, yeah. Okay. I said, well, what we need to do then is just stop taking it for a day. Let him to let him settle down, drink a lot of water and then come back and then just take a half a dose in the morning and start there for a week. Then take a full dose and then work your, you know, cause a lot you, the, you normally take it in the morning and night. So you're taking two doses a day and we just gradually worked our way in and then, and then they're fine. Right. But so, you know, it's very powerful. It's very powerful. Like, like, like I said, that functional medicine clinic, it's their go-to now. We have, we have no marketing except for just, you know, I do some shows from time to time and I have my own show and word of mouth. That's it. So we don't have a big marketing budget. You're not going to see us on Google or Facebook ads. It's, you're probably going to hear about us on a show like this, or somebody's going to tell you, Hey, this stuff worked for me and you should try it out. That's pretty much, we're just, it's literally a bottoms up movement, working class movement. I'm trying to defend public health, help the working class um, that are out really doing good things and help them take care and protect their health. There's really no more honorable mission in this day and age or probably any other. So excited to get into things on the other side, second hour. Got a lot more questions and things to cover off about detox and nutrition. So we'll see what else we can fit in with that because your wealth of information. <laughs> One of those guests that every podcast host would love to have on because you make it easy to flow right through an hour of really, really high grade information and bringing the light and excitement to the topics. I, I give thanks. I appreciate you, my friend, and look forward to getting into more in the second hour. Sounds awesome. Tim James, health hero for sure, for sure. I feel like I could talk to him about 10 more times and learn each and every minute from his awesome flow states. Like that is exactly the example of what it looks like to be in mental clarity because your physical body is good to go. <laughs> what a guy, seriously. I think we're going to do a lot more stuff together. And the idea of health and cleansing, like really detoxing the organs. So important. We'll talk about it again and again in future episodes. And it's been maybe a little while since we had a fully health oriented show, but I would have brought this guy on a long time ago if I knew about him. Got to give thanks to Matt Landman for making that connection. <laughs> How many times have you heard me say that in an outro? Matt Landman hooked me up with that guy or that, I guess, lady sometimes too. Yeah, not always a guy. <laughs> Why am I pausing on that point? I don't know. But yeah, thanks, Landman. He's the dude. So I think that we probably are just scratching the surface of human potential. And part of the issue with our ability to perceive our own potential is that our filtration systems, our organs are kind of muddy and not clear. I like to say that it's just no different than your like uh, furnace filter in your house or filters in your car or whatever. If you haven't, you haven't cleaned it, 
whatever it caught is still there. And we really need a higher level of uh, ability to experience the unity in all life force energy, the inner outer world reflection that becomes so much more clear, crystal clear, whenever we get our physical body temple purified and in working order. There's just so much to say about that. Check out his website, Chemical Free Body. And I don't think he said this in the free hour, but on the plus extension, he definitely brought it up that he's going to add and probably by now has already done so a coupon code to the website. 5% off, but it stacks onto the other discounts that might already be in place. So check that out. It's Chance, just my name. Chance will get you the 5% off on Chemical Free Body. I'm going to check out his products for sure. I I really expect good things from some of the scientific improvements he's made on particular supplements. I think that was in an hour two deal. Maybe he talked about that in hour one. I'm a little fuzzy on that. Looking forward to going back and listening to it again when I premiere the episode on YouTube and Rockfin. Which, by the way, if you guys are out there listening in RSS feed, audio only land, the video version of the show is quite a lot of fun. And if you hit the bell to get a notification on when I'm posting a premiere, hosting a premiere, I guess you could say, or going live on a Vibrant or something like that, then you can jump in and interact with all the wonderful chatters. We have quite a crew of regulars that hop in and share information and spread the good vibes on the life sandwich while we talk about the subjects that are coming up in the episode. It always adds a great extra flavor to the conversation to be able to experience it with the tribe. So I'd love to see more of you guys checking in on the premieres since so many more listen to the audio version of the show through the podcast player app of their choice and then actually are watching the videos and the videos have cool graphics that I make and you can see us, which adds to the, the energy too, because you can tap into that excitement and you can witness the vibrancy and the health of guests like Tim. Dude's got the fire for sure. Also, he's got the podcast called uh, Health Hero Show. I hadn't listened to that yet. That'll be going onto my list. Maybe even find some future guests out of that lineup for Interverse episodes. That'd be great. And definitely planning on bringing Tim in for a Vibrant also. And watch out for that maybe a couple months from now because the schedule's a little fold up. But it'd be very, very fun to interact with the audience and answer questions directly for you guys and have Tim bring his knowledge and expertise to the live. Totally, totally awesome. In the second hour, we got so deep. Definitely more on the spiritual side then, well, the first hour was definitely, definitely integrating the spiritual aspect of health and how all of that increases together. When the waters of your physical vessel are stronger and fuller, then definitely spiritual experiences expand as well. But in the second hour, we, we, we explained personal experiences that demonstrate that more clearly, talked about the intelligence inherent to the body, discussed how synchronicity increases when our energy level is increased, always continuing that theme of the following your highest excitement, leading you to more exciting things. Seems obvious, but you can never explain that too, too well. It's just so crucial in this world of like tons of negativity and self-imposed limitations and boundaries. It was fun and the plus extension to really dive into knowing our true power and what that's like. And I asked him some questions about his parasite removal protocols. That's a good conversational topic, always discussing parasites. <laughs> and then he gave us some really great information about pure air and water, structured water, what that was like for him when he got into that for the first time. And then some awesome stories about the amazing power of sprouts, sprouted broccoli and wheatgrass, stuff like that. He gave us some more information about that Hippocrates Institute of Health that was so crucial to his breakthroughs and his development. Super fascinating. He told us the sort of the lore and the origin story of the Hippocrates Institute, which was surprising and inspiring and definitely a unique tale. So get in there. If you want to hear the second hour, you can get it on Rockfin, Patreon. Those are the two options. Five bucks a month for Patreon. 
practically nothing when you like think about how much that would be a day considering all the content you get i should ask for more honestly but you get everything i ever did on patreon you get your own custom rss feed link that lets you plug it into the podcast player of your choice if you like to listen that way the videos get uploaded to the patreon page too Rockfin's $10 a month, which is more, but you get the premium content from every creator across the network. So really, it's a win-win either way you go. And I'd love to have your support. Uh, what else is on the agenda to tell you about? We did another episode of the Marvelous Demystifiers. We being myself, Slick Dissident, a.k.a. Gabriel, and Gordy Hamill, Gordy Two Shoes, who was also a recent Vibrant guest. And in the second episode of the marvelous demystifiers we broke down all the stuff in shang chi and the legend of the ten rings which is actually a pretty good movie not nearly as depressingly terrible as the eternals <laughs> eternals was a fun first inaugural episode because we did have a lot of opportunity to discuss mythology and uh, the possible all the possible linkages and connections and the social engineering that that movie had going on and i like watching movies and breaking them down it's a lot more fun than I can't really even watch a movie without some sort of agenda behind behind the watch, like I'm going to discuss it or analyze it. So I appreciate the opportunity to have this third show, monthly show, with the Marvel thing, with the crew, the comic book nerds, Gabe and Gordy. Love those guys. I hope you check it out. It was over. It was like three hours long, so a lot of content there to chew on. Super good stuff. And worth watching the video version, too, over the the audio only version, since there's a lot of screen shares that help us illustrate what we're discussing. What else do I want to tell you about? Well, you know what? Just like every time I got to remind you that I'm doing sound healing sessions for clients that get seemingly more and more powerful all the time, really excited about having repeat clients lately so that we can go even deeper into the, the gravy and the goodness of getting our chakras aligned and balanced and energized and charged up. Every single client's journey with the sound is unique and powerful and would love to see more of you hit me up for that. Chance at interversepodcast.com is where you can email me to set up a session or check out my website under the shop tab. There's a sound healing page or Oracle card counseling page where you can also get one-on-one -on -one card reading and spiritual guidance where you can reflect with me and the cards and generate a lot of chatter, not really chatter, but wisdom, <laughs> wise dialogue with yourself and the still small voice within, which gets a lot louder whenever we bring the mystical divination tools into the mix. So <clears throat> let's do it. Hit me up. Definitely want to work together. Join our Telegram group. If you're not part of the Telegram group, check the show notes for a link to that and all the other ways you can support the podcast, like repping some Interverse gear, get yourself a t-shirt or a, a nice coffee mug with my logo, which I think is a kind of fun logo, personally. It seems like more meaningful to me all the time. Someone pointed out, I think it was Mario or LC King, that the Interverse logo was like a, a polar, Polestar, Polaris symbol. And I for sure wasn't thinking about that whenever I just sort of haphazardly designed something that I thought looked cool. But I love how the expressions of our imagination contain deep levels of information and archetypal symbolism that reveal themselves more and more over time as the energy and power invested in the archetype grows and develops. Right. So uh, I'm going to play us out tonight, today wherever this may find you with a song by Martin's Gardens, or I think it's just Martin's Garden. Yeah, that's the artist. And the song is called It's Magic. It's magical. One of those things. Enjoy it. <laughs> Listen to more music. Listening to new songs and new music they haven't heard before is a great way to expand your mental map and reach further in the terrain of the unexplored inner verse. So hope you stick around for the tunes and if you're watching this on a video version, keep your eyes on the screen because there will be fun graphics that go along with it. Part of the artistry that I like to bring to the table. And I'm really excited about life right now. Spring is definitely popping off over here in Southwest Missouri. It's warm, beautiful sunshine, getting a lot more sun, which means we're all going to get a lot more powerful as the year goes on and 
my astrologer contacts tell me it's going to be quite a quite a year of ch- like life changes and big fluid amazing things so get excited life is a beautiful journey we're on it together always remember the power that you have to be exactly what you want to be to follow the soul's purpose and mission that you know you're incarnated for to explore until you find even deeper levels of connection between your soul's purpose and what you can express in life. There's no end to it. The only limitations are in our imaginations. (laughs) Okay. So enjoy this episode with Martin's garden. Um, It's magical. That's life. You're the magic. Love you all. Hope you're having a great day or night out there wherever you are, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.